breathe on us, Lord. Spirit to spirit, breathe into our spirit, Lord. Speak to us, Jehovah. We thank you, we bless you. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, can we bless God this evening? Glory to God, glory to God. Amen. You may be seated. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Even those that are viewing from Facebook, we greet you in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Amen. I truly believe I'm going to go straight into the Word of God. I believe I have a divine message for you today. Is from I truly believe is from God. Is from God. I know I spoke about talking about how to overcome fear. That just came Friday, but I truly believe this is coming from the belly of God is for you for this month and continue after this month. Amen? Let's go to Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Luke, oh, first of all, I greet everyone, first time guests. If you are here for the first time, first time, right? Can you stand, tell us your name? And you don't want to? You are shy. Okay. That's fine. All right. Well, welcome. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Let's go to Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 52. And uh, today's uh, topic will be walking in divine access. Walking in divine access. Divine access. Luke 2, 52. Amen. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. And Jesus increased in wisdom and statue and the favor of God was upon him. I am going to talk to you a little bit about the word divine access. How can we continue working in divine access? Have you ever been in a position that you want to purchase something and you don't have money? Or you need a connection and you don't have that connection or experience. But what you need is divine access to gain an access to receive what you don't have, what you don't deserve. The Bible tells us that Jesus moved in divine access. As a man, Jesus needed favor with God and man. Because on this, in this world that we are in, no one can live on the face of the world without favor of God. We need favor of God and we need favor of man or woman. When I use the word man, it's a spirit of man, not the gender of a man. Are you with me? So as a man, Jesus needed favor with God and man because no one can live in this world without the favor of God. So today we're going to talk on how can we start receiving divine access, working in divine access. First of all, what is divine access? Divine access is favor. Divine access is favor, also known as grace. Also known as grace. Favor 
give you access to people, to places, and to things that you could not gain access to naturally. Places, to people, or things you could not gain access to naturally. When God grants you divine access, it's because of the favor of God is given to you. The favor of God, divine access means favor of God. Granting you what you don't deserve. Giving you the connection that is needed. Favor is divine access because it doesn't depend on your education. It doesn't depend on your experience. It doesn't depend on your resources. It doesn't depend on your zip code. It doesn't depend on what you have, but it depends on your relationship with God. That's divine access. So I declare in the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name, as the Lord want me to preach this message, to teach this message today, that you will begin to experience divine access in every area of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. When I say divine access, I mean favor. I mean favor of God. I mean uncommon favor. I mean unusual favor. Glory to God. That God will begin to give you favor in every area of your life. Can I hear amen? Come on, can I hear amen? So favor is divine access because it doesn't depend on your education. It doesn't depend on your experience. It doesn't depend on your resources. It doesn't depend on gender. It doesn't depend who you are. God just give it to you because of your relationship with God. Amen. So how many trusting God starting this month? To begin to experience divine access. To begin to experience favor in every area of their life. The Bible makes us understand that Jesus he grew. Growing in favor with God and with man. Now, how can we obtain? Please listen to me today. How did Jesus did it? Or how? Can we obtain divine access or favor? Number one, through a specific assignment. Through a specific assignment, we can begin to obtain divine access from God. Let's go to Esther chapter 2 verse 9. Esther chapter 2 verse 9. I'm talking about how can you obtain divine access? Number one, through a specific assignment. How many of you God has given an assignment? How many of you God has given specific, I'm not talking about general assignment. There are general assignments and there's also what? Specific assignment. Glory to God. What is your specific assignment? Are you doing your assignment? Let me tell you, your favor is in the assignment that God has given to you. It's right there. Your favor is not in anywhere else, but in the assignment God has given to you. So whatever assignment God has given to you, do it faithfully. It might be difficult, do it. Hallelujah. It might be hard just to do it. Not only your favor, but your blessing is also attached to your specific assignment. Can somebody say amen to that? Now we will see in Esther chapter 2 verse 9. We know the story about Esther. It said, now the young woman pleased him. And she obtained his favor. So he readily gave beauty, beauty preparation to her. Beside 
hour allowance. Then seven choice maid servants were provided for her from the king's palace. And he moved her and a maid servant to the best place in the house of the woman. In other words, Esther had an assignment and the king gave her what? The king gave her favor. Your favor, your divine access is attached to your specific assignment. Number one is, what is your assignment? What has God given you to do? What is your calling? I'm not talking about general assignment. I'm talking about your specific assignment. In your specific assignment, your favor is there. Glory to God. Your divine access is there. In your specific assignment, God will connect you to great people. In your specific assignment, God will bless you. And that's how God blessed Esther. So number one, to obtain divine access or favor is through a specific assignment. So whatever is your specific assignment, begin to do it. Amen? There is favor that God gives a person to fulfill specific assignment. When God gives you an assignment, there's a favor God is going to give you. There's a door that will open for you. I call it divine access. Every door will begin to open to you. When you begin to do the assignment that God has given to you, you will need a key for doors to be opened. God himself will open those doors for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Glory to God. That's what they always say. Stay in your lane. In your lane, there's divine access. In your lane, there's favor. Favor in the name of Jesus. So there's a favor that comes that God will give you when you fulfill your assignment. Or when you are working on your assignment. And it is called direct favor. Come on, someone say direct favor. Come on, someone say direct favor. One more, one more time, say direct favor. What God will do when he gives you assignment and you are faithful to do your assignment, there's a favor destinated, there's a favor direct to you. Nobody can take it. It's meant for you and it is for you. Not for everybody. Not for everybody. It's for those that are fulfilling their assignment. It might be difficult. Continue to move forward. Amen. It might be hard. Continue to move forward. There's a direct favor coming in your way. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare today, say direct favor is coming for you. It's not for everybody. It's for me. For me alone. Because I am faithful. Because I'm focusing on my assignment. Because I am fulfilling my assignment. And there's a direct favor that will come to you. Can we shout amen to that? Now, specific assignment could be preaching the gospel in a specific place or a specific person. Amen. Sometimes God give you assignment. God might give me assignment. Specific assignment to minister to this young man. And that is my assignment. Even though some people want to preach to everybody. But your assignment might be just to minister to somebody, for somebody to receive Jesus, for somebody to be saved. I'm telling you, even in that, there's blessing and there's faithful attached to that. Preaching the gospel in a specific place or a specific person. Glory to God. I know somebody here. Every Saturday, they like to go and evangelize. I'm going to encourage you, keep on doing it. Don't give up, keep on doing it. It's an assignment that God has given to you. And I'm telling you, that assignment will open many, many doors for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Also, 
favor in opening a business or buying a business. Divine access. God can give you divine access. Or you might call it favor in a business. Or when you are buying a what? A business. Anybody starting a business very soon here? I prophesy favor. I prophesy divine access for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yours might not be that for business. It could be buying a home. Buying a home, there's a word, a divine favor. Glory to God. Divine access. God will connect you to the real, real estate agent. The agent that will give you favor. The loan company that will give you favor. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Divine access. Divine connection will come to you in Jesus' name. Also, it might be applying to school or university. It could be applying to school. There's a divine access or favor. Also applying for a specific job. Glory to God. It happened to Sam. I gave you the testimony uh, uh, last week. Specific job. I asked him, which one out of the three do you want? He said, I want this. Okay, you're going to get it. This is what we're going to do. He might be applying for a specific job. Or negotiating a contract. God will give you favor. Divine access. Amen. So number one is we can obtain favor or divine access through a specific assignment. Let me ask you today, what is your specific assignment? Has God given you this assignment? Or are you just doing it because everybody doing it? What is your assignment? What is your assignment? Church, what is your assignment? You need an assignment ordained by God. And when God gives you an assignment, I'm telling you, there will be divine access. It will connect you to people. It will connect you to even resources. Oh no, you didn't hear that. It will open the door for you. Amen. Divine access. Somebody say that. Divine. So how can we obtain divine access? Number one, through a specific assignment. I know my assignment. Glory to God. Really, my real assignment is preaching the gospel all over the world. I remember when I used to travel years back, God opened doors for me in nations. I'm going to tell you, Pastor Bachelor will tell you, big door open to nation. Connection to president of a nation. Amen. As little as a man. I'm serious. Connection. Doors opening. I wasn't looking for these doors. People were coming to me. I'm serious. Business people were coming to me. Years back, that's why I got into an oil deal, oil transaction. They came to me. People come. When you focus on your divine assignment, your specific assignment, doors will begin to open for you. Don't do what everybody is doing. What has God called you to do? Amen. Not what everybody is doing. Or me, I don't go where everybody is going. I go where God wants me to go. When I step my feet on that line, doors begin to open. In a nation where I don't know anybody. I can tell you, testimony and testimony. To a specific assignment. Your prayers will be, God, give me specific assignment. Amen. Don't say, God, give me something. Or, God, give me whatever. You are peculiar people. You need something for you. Specific for you. And just for you. So you can receive what? Direct favor. When I say direct favor, it's not for everybody. It's for you. It's designed for you. Amen. Come on. How do we obtain divine access? Number one. 
Come on. Say it. To what? If you don't have a specific assignment from God, begin to pray. This is your prayer point for this month. Until God give you specific assignment. Because that's where your favor is. That's where your blessing is. That's where your prosperity is. Amen? Now, let's go to number two. It's a teaching. I have a lot I have to give you today. Amen? That's why I'm coming quick. You got to. Look at Jesus. He grew in favor with God and man. How can we also continue to grow in favor with God and with man? Amen. Unless you don't want favor. Number two. I love this. Very simple. Being friendly. Being friendly to people. Amen? Stop being mean to people. You never know who God is going to use to give you that breakthrough. So Jesus was having favor with who? God and with man. I truly believe anyone that God sent around me is for a reason. It's for a purpose. We need to be friendly to people at the church. Right here in the church. At workplace, on the street. Whatever you do, be nice and be friendly to people. You never know who God is going to use. Not only be nice and be friendly to those that you know. It was straight there. Hello, how you doing? Praise the Lord, and the Lord is good. Even in the church, when we have guests, don't only talk to people that you see every Sunday. Talk to people. Be friendly to people. Are you hearing me? Let's go to Proverbs 18:24. It says, A man who has friends. Must himself be friendly. A man who have what? Friends. Must himself be friendly. We have to be friendly to one another. We have to be friendly. Listen to this. What the Bible says. He said, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. There's a friend. You never know who God is going to use to give you your direct favor. Hallelujah. But there's some friends who sticks closer than a brother. So number two is being friendly. Being friendly to people. Being nice to people. Glory to God. Even if you're having a hard time, be nice to somebody. Amen. Glory to God. Being friendly. Number three. Divine access through obedience. Obedience. I'm telling you, if you follow what I'm teaching today, I'm telling you, divine access, favor, will be coming your way starting this month in the name of Jesus. Starting this month in Jesus' name, doors will begin to open for you. Glory to God. Amen. True obedience. Obedience to God. Obedience to spiritual leader. Obedience to parents. Glory to God. Amen. Because God might not be here, but let me tell you, He's in heaven, but He can see everything. He knows everything. He knows those that are obedient. I hear what I'm saying. Let's go to Psalm 5, verse 12. Let's do this quick, quick, quick. Amen. Psalm 5, 25. Do you know what it says? For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him with a shield. Shield of what? Shield of favor. The righteous, those that obey God, obedience brings divine access. 
God will give you favor. He will surround him with a shield, a shield of people, a shield of favor. Glory to God. The righteous, those that obey God. Can we say amen? Can we say amen to that? Glory to God. People want favor, but don't want to obey. If you want favor, you have to first of all learn how to obey. If you don't obey, there is no favor. One of the prerequisites of favor is obedience. Is what? Obedience to God. Obedience to God's instruction. Glory to God. Obedience to the Bible. Obey the Bible, the word of God to the T. People want favor, but what? They don't want to obey. That favor comes upon you be when you obey. Glory to God. You might be at the back, but when you obey God, God will move you in front. Those in front, you will put them back because they didn't obey. If you obey God, I'm telling you, the last will be forced. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because you obey. You're not supposed to be in front because you obey God. God will move you in front. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how long you'll be here, God will promote you. It doesn't matter how long you'll be at your job place. If you obey, I'm telling you, promotion is coming. And that's what we call direct one, favor. Now, what is obedience? Obedience is listening, submitting to authority by choice, not by force. I'm going to repeat that. Obedience is listening, submitting to authority by choice, and an act of the will. An act of your will. It's not by force. It's by choice. And an act of the will. Everything we do in life is a decision of obedience or disobedience. And every act of obedience, listen to this please, every act of obedience releases a cycle of blessing. Every, listen to me today, a cycle, not just one blessing, but you are activating one, a cycle of blessing. Every act of disobedience activates a cycle of course. Obedience brings what? Blessing. Don't just say blessing. Cycle. Cycle of blessing. And disobedience brings what? Cycle. Of course. And everything that we do in life, we either obey, it's a decision that we make to obey or to disobey. So when you obey, it activates, glory to God, it activates cycle of blessing. Glory to God. I made up my mind to obey God. It might be difficult. It might be hard. I must obey. It might be tough. I will obey. Amen. Because he activates cycle of blessing. And disobedience activates cycle of course. When you obey, not only you will receive blessing from God, you also receive what? Favor. You receive divine access from God. Hallelujah. See, there's difference between blessing and favor. What is the difference, church? Blessing. Blessing is something when you obey, you do something to receive blessing. 
You obey, you receive what? You disobey, you receive what? But favor is what? You don't have to do anything to receive favor from God. God can just favor you because of your relationship with him. Not that you pray for favor. Yes. Favor is the same thing as grace. Unmerited what? Favor. You didn't work for it. Amen. You didn't work for it. God just give it to you. So when you obey, not only will bless, blessings come to you, favor and divine access. Favor and what? Divine access. Divine access also means God will begin to connect you to all the connections that you need to fulfill your specific assignment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Favor also is God giving the resources that you need for your assignment. Hallelujah. Divine access is God opening the door without you having the key to open it. Hallelujah. Divine access is me every door that the enemy has shut. God will open it in the face of the enemy. The enemy will say it and they cannot stop it. Hallelujah. Because it is the Lord's doing. Divine access. Hallelujah. You will have dinners with king. With prince. With princess. With governors. We save Christians. We save one. Businessman. Divine access. Connection. Hallelujah. I remember where Jason. We went to Abuja. A few years ago, you remember, and I got said, Go. I was going to meet somebody else for a project, but the person never showed up. But God knew the person would not show up. Guess what? God connected me to one of the richest men on that land. If I like the way I witness, this must witness because I obey, I was in the land. I didn't go there on my own. God said go. But the actual person that invited us, we couldn't find him. You think God didn't know? God have a divine access for me. We couldn't find the guy. We called. Remember Abuja? He was there. We called. We can't find the guy. So fly all the way to Africa. It was a project. So God spoke. He said for seven days, Lock yourself in and begin to pray. That's the thing. Is that so? We lock ourselves and we pray and we pray and we pray and we pray. On the seventh day, what happened? You remember? Mayowa. We just went to break our fast. God is my witness. Jesse is my witness. We just went to break our fast. Somebody, that man called Mayowa, he walked to me. We finish with him. Another person walked to me. God is my witness. You talking about divine access? Chidi walked to me. He said, what are you here to do? I said, from US. I said, when somebody promised us, but we can't find him. What are you, what are you trying to do? I told him. He said, ah, that's no problem. He said, my Oga, me, my boss. He's one of the richest in this land. And I, I am his um, PA. Senior PA. Nobody goes to him. He had to come to me. He said, guess what? Tomorrow, I want me, I want you and your PA to meet me at his house. Am I lying to you? Jason, tell them. God is my witness. Jason is my witness. He said, I want you to come to his house. It was like a dream. He gave us the address. He said, come there. When you come there, tell them you are here to see Chidi. So we went. When we got there, what happened? Stand up, tell them. You know what they do in Africa? 
They have a big old house, big old compound, fence. At first, I thought it was 419. I thought it was fake. I'm serious. When we get there, we saw all this military guy. We gone. How many? About four, five, they carry gun guys in the house. I say, oh, oh. It's like we are in the wrong place. God is my witness. They came out, our car parked, they just, why do you live like this? Then what happened? Then we tell them we are here to see Chidi. They went inside, they call him. The guy came out, he said, hey, Policeman, open the door and let this man of God and his PA come in. We think God is my I'm talking about divine access. Specific assignment. We enter his house. We sat with him. We talk and we talk and we talk. That guy owned about four jets. He gave one to the governor legitimate to the governor of his state. But before I went, you know what I did? As Jason, my wife, I asked him, I'm a stranger in this land, even though I was born there. But please tell me, who is this man? Remember? Because I don't go to people, I don't know who you are, and God don't send me there. Who is this man? The man went and came back and told us what, I don't know if you remember. He said, that man it's an unusual man. I say, oh, you, God will not open the door for you to meet a wrong person. He says, it's an unusual man. And he began to tell me about him. And that's what happened. When you are focusing on your specific assignment, doors will begin to open. With no struggle. Are you with me? So what is obedience? I gave you that right. How can you walk in obedience? Listen, I want you to know this. When you begin to do this, favor will begin to look for you. Doors will begin to open in various places. How to walk in obedience. Two ways. Very simple. This is very simple. Two ways. Because if there's no obedience, there is no divine access. If there's no obedience, there's no blessing. There's no favor. No, there's none from God. Amen. How? Very simple, number one. How to walk in obedience, number one. Love for God. Love for God. Very simple. Love for God. If you love God, you will obey Him. Why people don't obey? Because there's lack of love. Love for God. When you go, let's go quick to John 14, 15. He said, if you love me, you keep my commandment. Amen. It's not complicated. Just love God. If you're having problem to obey God, guess what? It's lack of love. When you love God, hallelujah, you will keep his commandment. When you love God, you will obey him. It's the love. If you love me, keep my commandment. That's how we can walk in obedience. Love for God. Cultivate a closer relationship with God. Amen. You will see the more you cultivate a closer relationship with God, the more favor you're going to begin to have. More access will you begin to have. Things will begin to happen for you. Are you hearing me? You don't need to pray. Pray for favor. Just obey. Hello? You don't need to fast for favor. Obey God. Cultivate close relationship with God. Say, if you love me, keep my commandment. Love is the motivation behind obedience. That's it. Love is the what? Motivation 
behind. He's obedient. He's the one that push you to obey. Love is the one that make you to obey. Is the motivation. Amen. I love God. Whatever you tell me to do, as long as I know you see him, I'm going to do it. Anybody like it or not too bad, I'm going to obey God. Amen. Amen. It's okay to amen. Amen. Love is the motivation behind obedience. When we love God, we desire to obey him. The desire is there. Amen. Even sometimes you're looking for instruction from God. Tell me what to do next. I just want to serve you, Lord. Love is the key. It's the motivation. Amen. The love for God. Amen. Amen. You know what Paul said in Corinthians? He said, it is the love of God that constrains us to do what we do. If one died for all, what kind of love? One died for Paul. What kind of love is that? I love him. Amen. Not because of favor. Not because of blessings. Not because of money. I love God for what he did for me. What he did for all of us. Paul said if one man die for all, all should die for him. Oh, but this is the gospel. That's it. So love is the motivation behind obedience. When we love God, we desire to obey him. Any love that doesn't result in obedience to God is false love. Any love that doesn't result to obedience is not true love. It's false. It's eros love. Conditional love. I love you because you buy my lunch. It's false love. I'm talking about what? Agape love. Somebody still with me? Amen. So love is the motivation behind obedience. When we love God, we desire to obey Him. Any love that does not result in obedience to God is false love. Number two, talking about how to walk in obedience. We are still talking about divine access, how to receive favor from God. We must obey Him. That's how Jesus received favor. He grew in favor. When you read in Amplify, he said he continued to grow in favor with God and with man. That means the favor of God upon his life increasing daily. Daily he increased. Amen. I'm telling you, I don't pray for favor. I'm praying for assignment. Specific assignment. So I can obey God. Amen. Are you hearing me? So number one, how to walk in obedience, love for God. Number two, I love this. Number two is having faith in God. Having faith in God. Let's go to Romans 4.20. Having faith in God. Some people love God, but they don't trust Him. Yes, they love God. They don't 100% trust Him. They don't believe He's going to deliver. Very important. Yeah, you can love and don't trust. Right? Yes. You can love. And don't trust. Amen. Yeah, you can love. But they don't trust him. Having faith in God, let's go to Romans 4.20. This is Abraham. He said he did not waver at the promise of God. 
through unbelief, but was what? Strengthened in faith. Strengthened in faith. Not only he loved God, he also had faith in God. Giving glory to God. And be fully convinced that what he has what? Promised, he was also able to perform it. That's why people don't obey. They don't think God's going to perform it. They don't think it's going to come to pass. They waver. Unbelief. Are you hear what I'm saying? One is to love, another is to have faith in God, believing whatever God has spoken will come to pass. Come on, I may believe God. I may know that all the promises of God will come to pass. Even though there might be delay, it's going to come to pass. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every spoken word of God over our life will come to pass in Jesus' name. We love him. We're going to obey him. We're going to continue to trust him because God is going to deliver. Oh God, can I hear a loud amen? God is going to deliver. God is going to perform. The Bible said Abraham was fully convinced. Another version said fully persuaded. Fully, I love that. Fully persuaded. In other words, nothing can change his mind. He knows that he knows that he knows that what God has promised, he's going to deliver it. He has done it before and he will do it again. Even at his old age, God is able. Come on, tell somebody, God is able. God is able to deliver. God is able to fulfill his promise. I will continue to trust him. I will continue to have faith in him. He's going to do it. He has done it before. He will do it again. I'm standing strong. I'm standing strong. In the name of Jesus. I'm giving glory to God. For all that he has promised. I'm thanking him. For all that he has done. I know he's going to perform. I know he's going to fulfill it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I will not waver to unbelief. Every promise of God, I yea and amen. I yea and amen. I believe it. I believe it. And that settles it. I'm strong in faith. I'm standing on all the promises of God. He's going to come to pass. I love him and I have faith in him. I say I love him and I have faith in him. I'm not going to be moved. I am not going to be shaken. I believe God. He's going to do it. Even starting this month, I will begin to see the promise of God unfold in my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's going to come to pass. Every door that be closed will be open. Oh, that's what we call divine access. Divine connection. Uncommon favor. Unusual favor. Watch and see. Watch and see. What the Lord is about to do. Because the favor of the Lord is upon my life. You better speak for yourself. It's upon my life. Divine access. Divine access. Divine access. Great favor. I love him. And I have faith in him. Oh, I love it. Oh, Father, thank you. I thank you. So how to walk in obedience. Love for God. Having Favor in God. Abraham obeyed God because he had faith in him. True obedience is based on both. Those two. Love for God and faith in God. True obedience. That's it. True obedience is based on both a love for God and faith in God. Now, next question, and I will stop. Almost finish. Good. I have to move swiftly. What activate favor? What activate favor? How many want to activate favor? Amen. 
I know you love God. You have faith in Him. Can I hear Amen? Good. You love God and you have what? Faith in Him. Amen? That means you will obey Him. Amen? But what activate? You, there's another way also you can activate favor or divine access. Let's go quick to 1 Samuel 2 30. I can activate my favor right now. How can we do that? Are we there? He said, therefore, the Lord God said, the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father will work before me forever. But now, the Lord said, you see, before it said they will work before him, it will give them favor forever. But now something changed. He said, but now the Lord says, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall lie, what? Slightly esteem. Those who honor me, I will what? Honor him. If you honor God, God will honor you. God did not change. I know you can read that scripture. I said, but God changed. God didn't change. God did change. The principles and the precept of God are set. God cannot change. Who changed? The Israelite changed. They changed. Because God said, therefore, he said, therefore, the Lord said to the Israel, I said indeed. He said, Well, I said this that the house of your father, you and your father, will walk before me forever. But God said, But now something changed. God did not change. They changed because they stopped honoring God. They stopped what? Honoring God. God said, If you honor me, I will honor you. If you stop honoring me, guess what? Do you think God will continue to honor you? Or God will continue to give you favor? No! It don't go like that. Honor, please listen to this, honor will determine the level of favor that will release upon your life. Honor. Honor also is a divine exchange. God say, you honor me? I will honor you. Who we'll honor first? Divine exchange. You honor me? I honor you. When you honor God, do you know how you honor you? He give you favor. He give you what? Favor. Grace. Unmerited favor. I remember I told you when we went to Israel, that was favor. We went to Israel. Nobody can enter the Garden of Gethsemane. Remember the Garden of Gethsemane? Nobody can enter. They have the monk cleaning the place. Everybody, they were outside. The fence was about this high. Everybody was looking. They were looking. They were looking. People from all over the world. This monk just came towards me. He was inside the fence. He said, you and you come inside. You and you come inside. So we had a guy with us. He's an Israelite. He's a citizen. He's a citizen of Israel. He's the one that takes us around. He said, so, like a tall guy. So I had to tell the monk, say, well, let him into is with us. I'm serious. He said, you and you come inside. Everybody got upset. They look at us like, who are these people? 
may be honor God. We honor God. Let him honor us in front of everybody. Man, even my walking change the way I'm walking right now. Praise the Lord. That's what he said when we went inside. He said, stay there as long as you want. We took a lot of pictures. You have the picture, I'll show you guys. We took a lot of picture where we are praying. I was praying by the tree of Gethsemane. You know, we are showing, you know, everyone was looking at something, those guys said they walk away too bad. Honor. Oh, Amen. Amen. So honor will determine the level of favor released upon you. When you honor God, he gives you what? Favor in return. Favor in return. Amen. Amen. You can have the father of favor and honor the father of favor, which is God, and don't receive honor. Honor releases and activates a new level of favor. And I'm done. Honor releases and activates new level of favor. New level of favor. You can change your level of favor. You yourself can activate favor in your life. One is obedience and two to honor God. Honor is a divine exchange. Glory to God. And all God will do, he will return it with favor, uncommon favor. Giving you what you don't desire. Giving you what you didn't pray, pray for. Giving you what you didn't work for. Giving you what you don't know that it belongs to you. He will give it to you. That's divine word. Favor. When I go to nation, I'm telling you, I'm not bragging. God give me favor. In Ghana, favor. In Australia, favor. We went to Ilson concert. This man don't know us from nowhere. Just saw two of us. He said, where are you guys from? We said, we are here from U.S. to, 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 um, um, to uh, attend the concert. Uh, Ilson. He said, come on. Let's go. He said, go where? He said, don't worry, I'm going to show you around. And we're going to go to a, 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 a restaurant, Turkey restaurant. I'm going to show you all my property in Sydney. So we went, we followed him. Hey Amen. I understand. I understand his favor. He didn't go to everybody. That's what I'm calling direct favor. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people were there. He came to us. Amen. Hey Amen. Hey he came to us. And we followed him. Guess what? He took us around. I thought he was a small guy. Even when we enter his car. Hey. It's one of those expensive Mercedes. Is it Porsche? Or Mercedes Benz? One of these car, man. I almost want to ask him, how much do you pay for this? But in America, some kind of expensive vehicle. He drove us around. He took, you know, went by the bay. By the ocean, he said, Do you see that large building? It is mine. Do you see the God is my witness? He said, That development right there, he said, It is mine. I'm also a real estate, a, a stranger. A divine access to connection. He took out to the restaurant. He said, All of those restaurants, they are working for me. He said, This is my restaurant. God, if I he said, this is my restaurant, you know, you know, eat whatever. Hallelujah. <laughs> he said, eat whatever. Glory to God. I think, is it a Turkish restaurant? You know, man, they're good with beef. They have this big meat. Big. Man, I ate. Glory to God. I understand that God is giving us favor in return. Glory to God. We ate and we ate and we finished. It's like it took us almost everywhere. Like we want to take us to his house. 
Ça va penser. Ça, you gotta take us back to our hotel. We gotta go. That's favor. Favor. I went to Ghana. A businessman met me. It was a physical therapy for our New York needs. Years back. You know, retire now. He was in Ghana and Midred. You know Midred? Midred connected me to him. He saw me. He said, man of God, you're always wearing suit. I'm going to send my tailor to you. Let them give you the native. When you come to Ghana, don't wear your suit. Leave your suit in America. Let them measure you and give you what? Muse. Guess what? Eight suit African attire. All the one that I'm wearing, I'm not native. I'm wearing from Ghana. Then we entered Dubai. We went to Dubai. Another businessman. He said, Apostle, yeah, you like suit. You know, I'm going to go, want you to go to my tailor. Let them make you another suit. Guess how many? Another eight. A few weeks later, he said, Apostle, you know, he was wearing the national. I said, I like your suit. He said, Oh, Apostle, guess what? I'm going to let you to go to my designer. You and your wife, if I like to. Maybe I should wear that suit on Sunday, you would know. He said, if I, he said ah, I'm serious. He said, if I, you know, he said, oh, that suit, I really like it. I'll just give you a compliment. He said, oh, I thought so. so okay, I, w- I want you to go to my tailor. They're going to pick you guys up, both of you, you and your wife, designer. He said, yeah, thank you. They would design your suit. I went there, he said, you take five, and your wife also take five. I didn't say no. I know God is returning. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. When you honor God, God will favor you. Do you know how much they said that one suit is a designer? Why they print your name inside and they put blah, 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 blah. I didn't pay that. They pick us up with them. I mean, the series, A series, BMW, just chilling at the back. Eh? Ready to go in favor. Hallelujah. Divine favor. Glory to God. Are you hear what I'm saying? Oh, no, you're not hearing me. No, you are not hearing me. You are not hearing me. When you obey God, hallelujah, God will bless you. When you honor God, God will bless you. Hallelujah. You can activate a new level. Of favor. Nation. I went to Ghana. Blessing. Dubai. Blessing. God opened those assets. I went to Zimbabwe. Blessing. I went to Nigeria. Ah, hometown. Hey, yeah. Blessing. We went to this guy. I'm talking to you about blessed favor of God. Growing in favor with God and with man. There's another rich guy in Nigeria. We went to one of his mansions, four mansions that he had in the village. I don't know why he built that kind of house in the village, but I won't do so. It was having his birthday. We went there. His pilot came to me. That's my wife. He has three pilots. Two. One take break. One come back. They go. They rotate like that. One came to me. He said, I like you very much. He said, tell him. If you tell him, if you tell him to fly you. America. The pilots were born. They want to, you know, they want to in- increase what they call nautical mileage. It's good in their resume. He said, tell him, you will fly, you will fly to America. You tired of Lagos. Take her. But I feel sorry for his uh, few money. You got to fly from Lagos to US and back. He said, I didn't ask him. I said, no. If I ask him, he will do that. Favor. Even if you don't want to do it, God will make him do it. Come on, church. Can we stand on our feet? Come on. Can we stand on our feet? He may say, Father, we thank you. Father, I bless your holy name. Father, I give you praise and I give you glory. Say, Heavenly Father, help me to constantly obey you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, increase my love in you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father, increase my faith so I can obey you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, starting from today, I will increase the level of my honor. 
to you in the mighty name of Jesus. As I begin to honor you, Father, activate, activate your favor in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, help me, Lord, to increase my faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Activate, activate my favor. Release new favor upon me, new level of favor upon me in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Father, I bless your holy name. Father, I exalt your holy name. Lord Jesus, I thank you and I bless you and I exalt your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Come on, somebody shout amen. Come on, shout amen. Even starting from today, I also prophesy as we begin to obey God that God will release a new level of favor. New level of favor upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, there will be divine access in my life. In the name of Jesus, divine access to people, divine access to places, divine access to things. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare the favor of God upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, new level of favor, new level of favor, I release upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. The same way Jesus grew in favor with God and with man. Father, as we begin to obey you, O oh Lord, release new favor, new level of favor upon us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Even as we honor you, even honor you today, as we honor you, Father, release new level. Activate, activate new level of places in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For those that are looking for job, I pray favor in regards to job in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say new level, new level of favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that want to open business, I pray for favor in the name of Jesus. Those that want to purchase business, I pray for favor. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, let there be divine access in the name of Jesus. Those that want to purchase a new home, do I see a hand there? A new home, I pray for divine favor. I pray for divine access that you will connect them to the right agent. You will connect them to the right loan officer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Those that having a specific job, specific job, specific job, specific job, I declare in the name of Jesus, you will have favor. You will have favor because you have favor with God. God will give you favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we give you praise. I also pray for some people here that say, well, I don't have specific assignment. I don't have specific assignment. Say, Lord, I need a specific assignment. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you will give them specific assignment. Assignment that you have for them. The reason why they were created. Give them, oh Lord, because we learned today that divine access, we can obtain divine access through a specific assignment. Father, give them specific assignment in the name of Jesus. Specific assignment in the house of God. Specific assignment in their circular job, in their career. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. So they can increase in favor. I also pray in the name of Jesus that we will be more friendly. We will be more friendly with people because we know when God sees that we are friendly, we are loving, and we are friendly with people, God will begin to give us favor. God will use even those people that we are friendly to to give us favor 
in the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. And say in the name of Jesus. I also pray in the name of Jesus. We learn today that true obedience, true obedience, true obedience, we receive favor from God. As we begin to obey you, you will give us favor. You will release a new level, activate a new level upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. We learn today how to obey God is love God and also faith in God. As we increase our love and cultivate a closer relationship with you, I pray in the name of Jesus, you we give us favor. You will give us favor. The way Jesus grew in favor with God and with man. I declare favor in this ministry. I declare a new season of favor in this ministry. I declare. For the Bible say we shall declare a thing it shall be established. I declare a new level of favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Father activate our faith. Activate a new level of favor in the name of Jesus. Father we thank you. Father we bless you. Surround us with a shield of favor. When we turn to the right we will receive favor. To the left we will receive favor. When we move forward, we will receive favor. When we move backward, we will receive favor. When we are standing, we will receive favor. In the name of Jesus, I also pray for divine access. Divine access. Divine access. In the name of Jesus. Father, I give you praise. Father, I give you praise. And I give you glory. And I give you honor. And I bless your holy name. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody bless God. Come on, let's exalt him. Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Level of favor. New level of favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take our tithe and offering. And dismiss for today. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to honor God. Amen. With our time, with our offering, giving, obeying God, favor comes. Favor comes. Glory to God. Amen. We activate favor by honoring God. Honor is divine exchange. If you need envelope, our usher will give you one envelope. Also, way to give. Also, those that are viewing on Facebook, way to give is on the screen. We are still working on um, our regular cash app. Right now, we're using event cash app, dollar sign ELCC events. You can give through that. You can give through that. As we pay our tithes, offering, we are honoring God. We are obeying God. And guess what? Favor we come. Favor we come. Relationship with God. Love of God. Having faith in God. We will obey God. Amen. So let's give as we give. Wholeheartedly. Cheerfully. Amen. That's a sign that our heart is with God. Heart is we were with God as we give cheerfully. Amen. Pay our tithe and offering. Glory to God. Shows that our heart belongs to Him and that money does not control us. Very important. It means that what? Money does not what? Control us. That our heart is with God. Amen. Our heart is with God. God giving. I don't mind to tell you this. One of these days I will teach this. Giving is a sign that our heart is with God. Most people that don't like to give is because their heart is not with God. Their heart is in their money. And money controls. Money controls. Amen. Our heart is with him. 
and their money does not control all. So let us give joyfully. Amen. And give in love. Because we love God. Our heart is with him. Money is just an instrument that we use to further the kingdom of God. Amen. It's an instrument that we use to do the work of the Lord. Amen. Money will not control you in Jesus' name. It's a sign that our heart is with God. Giving is like that. Like our heart is with God. We are giving to the work of the ministry. Also, I want I want to acknowledge some people that gave towards the electricity. We just fixed the electrical issue that we are having here. When was that? Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, yesterday. It was fixed yesterday. Uh, when we came here, it was working. But I guess we have a lot of our instrument and some stuff, and I stopped working. That's why you will see in that corner we have the wires running. We're going to remove the wire today. It was fixed yesterday. And uh, they have to run a new feed just for this department here, for here, so that it can carry what we have. Because one day, too, TV wasn't working, a lot of our electrical problem. So we fix it. There are a few people that gave towards that. Uh, I didn't even ask them if I should mention their name, but I want to thank you very much for giving. You know, uh, we don't want to throw it out there. We have some people, and uh, they gave. They gave. Thank you very much. God bless you. And uh, the, it's fixed. Uh, Craig was here for the electricians and with the team, right? Yeah, they were here to fix it. So thank you for that. Amen. Amen. We asked few people that we asked the deal. We say no. Oh. We have some people on the dollar, they gave more. That tells me where your heart is. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And also pray for you that the Lord will release and activate a new level of favor in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I also pray for connection, divine connection in the area of your specific assignment in the name of Jesus Christ. And I know if we ask everybody, more people will give. We don't want to bother more. Don't worry, carpet is coming soon. Everybody will give to that one. And the church will say, Amen. That's why I didn't put it out there because I'm waiting for the carpet. He's trying to get the price for the carpet. If we do it together, it won't, it won't, it won't be much. Everybody give it, you know? Yes. So that's why I don't want to give it to the church. But the thank for those people that gave. God bless you exceedingly and abundantly. Nobody said no. I tried to give more. Yeah, some people, couples supposed to give like 200, they give 500. Whoa! I pray for new level of favor, divine access. Don't worry, I know if I ask you, you will give. I'm coming to you soon anyway. <laughs> and everybody say, Amen. I'm coming to you very soon. Pray for the carpet. All of us will do it. We got to change it. Yeah, we got to change it now. You, 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 you can see when you see it, sharing, that tells you, use it. How long? So we have to change this. See this black stuff? See this? What's this? Amen. This is the mean the things that we do for God, you have to be spirit of excellence. We have to do with spirit of excellence. When you see the thing is dirty, only God knows how many years he has been there. I'm sorry. I don't like it. We're going to change it. Amen? We're going to change it. Do the carpet. And that's it. That's it. For the glory of God. I like spirit of excellence. Whatever we do for God should be excellent. Should be right. Amen? Are you hearing me? Amen. Glory to God. So let's give so we can go home. Don't worry. Next week we'll do testimony. We started a little late today. Yeah, I know this was the whole point. So I said, no, well, let's use wisdom here. Let me come in and preach it. We finish before 10. So then um, next week, we do start earlier. We can do testimony. So save your testimony. Amen. 
I want to hear a testimony of favor. Amen. Of divine access. Glory to God. Amen. I'm serious. I'm not just talking anywhere I go. I, I expect it because I obey God. I obey God. And I get it. Strangers. I get it. In Jesus' name. We have our offering. We have our tithe seed. Oh, somebody want to activate new level of our favor. You want to write the seed and call it divine access or call it favor. Divine asset to honor God. If you want to do that, you can do that as well today. That's another way we can activate. Glory to God. We give this to God. Amen. Just write divine access. Divine access. Or favor. To activate in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lift up your offering. Envelope if you have it. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We exalt your name. We give you praise, glory, and honor. Father God, for those that are activating a new level of favor, a new level or new release of divine access, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to back my word. Because you are the Lord that back the words of your people. They declare a thing and you make it happen. So, Father, I declare today in the name of Jesus Christ, those that are giving that seed, back their word, back my word, and give them great favor in the name of Jesus. Also, those that are honoring you, giving their time, obeying you, paying their time, and give their offering. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, because honor is divine exchange. In the name of Jesus, and obedience, you give blessing and favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, we bless you in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen. You have your offering, please bring it. It's okay, just come. If, if you give online, use your phone tap so we know everybody's giving. Ray Sean, we've been called for to show his excellence. All I require for life, God has given me, and I know who I am. I know who God says I am, what he says I am, where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am, what he says I am, where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. Hey. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah. I know who I am. I know who I am. Amen. Let us stand as we dismiss. So, what is divine access? Yeah, what is divine access? Huh? Favor or grace? How can you obtain divine access? What? How can you obtain favor? Or divine access. Number one. Number one. Specific assignment. Man, already you forgot. You can't even finish. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four.
Okay, let's go home. All right, let's do it again. I want you to grab this. Jesus grew in favor with God and with what? And with man. Let me tell you, on the face of this world, of this earth, if you don't have favor with God and man, it's going to be tough. With God and man, how will God favor you? God ain't coming down from heaven to favor you, you know. <laughs> Who God going to use? Yes, people around you. That's why sometimes we need to know, connect with everybody in the church, know what they do, who they are, where they work. Amen. Person that God's going to use to give you breaks, you might be sitting beside you. You don't even say hello to them after service. You don't know their profession, what they do. Are you hearing what I'm saying? How many know that Lady Korea is an accountant? Only one. Only one. That's why we have to connect. Amen. And be friendly. Amen. How many know that Sam is into finance? He doesn't even talk to anybody after church. After Sam. He doesn't stay and connect. I you what I'm saying? That's a fin- finance. He was a vice president of a company he was working for before. Wealth management. We got to connect, be friendly, and know what we do. We can help. God can use us for favor. Amen. Everybody know that. I mean, know that Tima is a lawyer now. I mean, know that, uh, what's her name? Maya's a lawyer. I I mean, know that Gladys is a businesswoman. She's a businesswoman. We got to be friendly to one another. Connect and stick together. Know what they do. Amen. Rather than go look for help outside. I hear the saying. So number one, and then we will go. Number one. Number two. Number three. Amen. Let us go. Amen. It's only three I gave you. Next week, we start something or something. Amen. How do you walk in obedience? So you're listening. It's listening. How do you walk in obedience? Love God. If you love God, it's a motivation to obey. Number two. Faith in God. Excellent. Excellent. God bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance and the Lord give you peace. That the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Let it guide our heart and our mind through Christ Jesus. Let the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit